Good evening. You are at the West King County White Center Community Service Area meeting. That's the flight you got on. If that is not the flight you intended to be on, you're in the wrong meeting. Good evening. Um, I'm John Taylor. I'm the Director of Local Services. I'm going to be your uh, Master of Ceremonies this evening. Um, so this is an annual meeting we do every year. And the intent of this meeting is to sort of bring King County's elected officials and those of us who work in the executive branch out to you to answer questions, to provide information. You may have noticed one of the things we're adding this year is there are a lot of services around the periphery of this room for the first time. So um, we have things like pet licensing here. You can get documents notarized. You can register to vote. You can enter road services requests over there. Um, so if you haven't wandered around the room at the end of the meeting, feel free to do so. Uh, and to kick things off right now, I'm going to introduce uh, Councilmember Joe McDermott, who represents this district. Thank you, John. I want to welcome John as the Director of the Department of Local Services, and more importantly, welcome all of you to our annual conversation here in North Highline. Um, what's going on in the county? Let me give you a, a quick heads up on a couple of things the council is working on or things coming from my perspective, and then um, we'll hear from others, and then I really look forward to the Q&A and the conversation um, as the key part of the evening. First of all, um, earlier this month, the council adopted some historic legislation making an investment of over $315 million in the children of the county dedicated to edu improving educational outcomes for children who have challenges in the educational system, from being involved in the justice system, to foster youth, to low-income um, children of color, really making investments to make sure that they can achieve and have their best success possible. We are also undertaking some work the executive just transmitted to the council to improve our response to the homelessness crisis. We, we see it here in North Highline, we see it in the city of Seattle, we see it in cities and unincorporated areas throughout the county. It's not one jurisdiction, it truly is a regional problem, and I believe it needs a more regional solution and response. And that's why um, there's legislation now pending bet before the county council and the city council to create a regional entity to coordinate our responses and have one group of people making those decisions, those investments, and allocating resources rather than individual governments that certainly do communicate, but not in the best way possible. There are some frustrations. I'm pretty disappointed with um, some, some recent awards to senior centers in that while it did fund the South Park Senior Center from levy funds for ongoing funding, a number of senior centers serving um, this general area and the rest of our district did not receive ongoing funds as part of the Veterans, Seniors, and Human Services Levy Awards that came out recently. Um, those senior centers that did not receive the ongoing funding include the Vashon, West Seattle, Burien, SeaTac, and Tequila, some significant areas across our district. And I'm certainly um, having conversations with the executive branch and the department about how to um, re review those awards and also what other opportunities do we need to make sure that those senior centers are aware of so we can make sure that um, they have the support and the investment that we promised when we went out with the levy and that they need to be able to serve seniors across the county. And a couple of, it's, couple of projects um, that are just beginning that I'm looking forward to working on. One is working with this community in particular and unincorporated areas across the county to ban fireworks. There was a um, tragedy in this community when someone um, died as a result of um, fireworks this 4th of July. And the level of use and explosions um, here in North Highline um, has reached unprecedented levels and is witnessed by the amount of um, concern I've heard, both from people in North Highline, but also Vashon. Vashon Moy Island is um, concerned about the um, possibility of um, wildfires and particularly in the middle of a dry summer. So both of the key unincorporated areas of my, of my district, of our district, um, really voicing um, support for a ban like I've never heard before. And I'll be taking that up and working with you, working with the executive, and my colleagues on the council to make sure that that's in place. 
And as we talked about moving people around, um, Metro Transit, um, Sound Transit, do, really, do a really good job of making the big commute. But we have to make sure people can get that first mile, that last mile. Um, get to the bus stop, get to the transit center, make that short trip. And one in innovative way that's coming to the city of Seattle, coming to other cities in the region, are electric scooters. I think we have a real opportunity to explore electric scooters and the benefits and um, possible liabilities right here in White, White Center. I want to thank the people in the community that have already reached out to and have engaged with me about how scooters might work here and look forward to working with even more as um, we, we undertake a pilot project to um, have scooters here in unincorporated King County. With that, um, look forward to more presentations tonight. And like I said, the real meat of the evening will be the conversation, the Q&A we have um, in a few minutes. Um, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And I'll turn it back over to John to make the next introduction. Thanks very much. Next, we have our director of elections. Turn the lights off for this one, I guess. <laughs> Hi, how are you? You can leave them off. It's okay. I wasn't offended. How are you? Good. Um, can I ask you a question? Are you registered to vote? Yes. yes. Okay, fantastic. If you're not, you can hand right over here to Will, and you can pretend you're going to get a lovely button if you don't want to admit you're not registered or anything like that. But we're here to register you to vote today and provide you any information around voting. So my name is Julie Wise, and I am your elected director of elections. It's a lot of electing going on. I understand and recognize that. So um, I'm just going to jump through a couple of slides. Again, really the goal for tonight is to um, have opportunity to hear from you. So I'm here to listen to you and to answer any of your questions. So I'll be very quick. Um, we started Vote by Mail in King County a decade ago. So it's already been 10 years since we've been Vote by Mail. And we have 1.32 million registered voters here in King County. We anticipate by the presidential election next year, we'll be at 1.5 million registered voters. And we believe about 85% of eligible voters are currently registered. Um, so we're going to have, do you, you're registered to vote. Do you like voting? Yes. Yes. Fantastic. That's the right answer, sir. Because um, you have a lot of opportunities coming up. So we've got our November 5th general election, of course, this year. Local elections, I would argue, are just as important, if not more important, than your presidential year. So we really encourage each of you to make sure that you're going to get your ballots three weeks before election day. Make sure to return those ballots, please. And then next year, we have so many opportunities for voting. In fact, all of those. So we'll have our special elections, of course, in the spring. But we're also going to have a presidential primary election in March. So watch out for that ballot from King County elections. And then we'll have our primary election, of course, in August, and our presidential election in November. So you will be getting a lot of mail from me to you. Uh, please make sure that you return your ballot. And oh, you have so many options to return your ballot. I really feel that my goal and my job as director of elections at King County elections is to remove barriers increase access for all. Voting should be as easy as possible for each and every one of us. So in Washington State, I believe, thank you in part or in whole to King County, uh, that we have prepaid postage. So you no longer have to have a stamp to return your ballot through the United States Postal Service, or you can return it to one of 68 ballot drop boxes across the county as we're adding them every day. And those close right at 8 p.m. I think that's it. That's not me. Thank you very much. And next we have a representative from the assessor's office. Thank you, Rich Watson. Sorry for my New York accent in advance. What I'd like to do to talk to you today is about something that uh, the assessor, along with the executive, has worked really hard in the legislature uh, this year. Starting in 2020, there's going to be a new senior exemptions threshold limit. As you know, for a long time, it's been around $40,000 uh, income. So it's going to be tied to 65% of the median county income, which increases the threshold to about $58,000. That's significant to keep seniors in their homes. And that's something that Assessor Wilson has really worked hard uh, to do. Uh, it's going to be effective next year. So if you go to our website, you may not see the 2020 applications yet because Washington State Department of Revenue has to uh, create those applications, send them to us. 
We create ours, they verify it, but it is coming. You'll see a lot of information on this, and it's going to be really important to our seniors in our community. The most significant change to this exemption program to keep seniors in their homes since its inception. In the exemption program, there are several levels of exemption. And there's a standard exemption. It's going to be around 58000 It freezes the value of the home. Uh, lower levy rates, and you're exempt from certain uh, levies. There's a partial exemption that goes up to about 49000 and it gives you 35% off the tax liability, and you can see the information there. It's frozen value. At what age do you qualify? Uh, 61. Uh, it depends. You've got to be 61 in the year for the following year. I have brochures in the back that explain all the requirements for you. And then there's a full exemption around 40,000, 60% uh, off the tax liability, again, frozen value and lower levy rates. But what everybody wants to know about is, da, 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 what is property values doing right now? So the good news in our area is property values are flat. You're not going to see the level of increases that you've seen uh, year over year over the last three to five years. What is that? What does flat mean? probably less or right around 5% or less. And if you're a little bit north of this area, you may see a slight decline. But property values are not double digit increases as in the past. So that's good news. What's also exciting, and if you come to the back table where I am, I do have a, an iPad with the property tax transparency tool on there. If ever you wanna take a look at your own property, your own neighborhood, your own census track, we have something called LocalScape, which allows you, in the privacy of your home, to actually take care and take a look at the, the area that you live, take a look at your home, take a look at the value. It's a pretty powerful tool, and I'd recommend you taking a look at it, and I can and show you in the back. And when the, pro one more. When the property tax measures uh, are on the ballot, guess what? You can go to LocalScape and see how those ballot initiatives are going to affect your property tax. It's a really cool system, and we've worked really hard to make transparency number one at the assessor's office. And that's all I have for today. Right. Awesome. I'll be in the back if you need me. Thanks very much. And now we have Major Jesse Anderson coming up, who is the precinct commander covering this area. All right, thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'll make it pretty quick here. Uh, I am actually the newer precinct commander. I've been in this precinct uh, for about a month and a half now, and so I'm happy to be here. I started my career here back in 1991, so kind of making a full circle coming back. And so I'm here to talk to you a little bit about crime stats for the White Center area at Boulevard Park and our area of South Park. And so um, as you can see there, um, these are our patrol districts, and you can see a covered White Center and then Boulevard Park and go ahead and on to the next one. And these are our quarter two stats for uh, King 1 and King 11, which is uh, White Center. You can see the numbers there for total uh, dispatch calls for service. And then the King 7 is Boulevard Park, South Park area. Uh, and you can see that uh, number there for uh, dispatch calls for service. So that includes everything that we, as police officers, get called out to based on 911 calls. Uh, kind of go over fairly quickly here the, uh, the crimes uh, for these areas. Uh, this is White Center area. We have 2018, 2019. The jagged line is 18 and the solid line is 19. Uh, you can see part one crimes, which consist of more violent person type crimes like homicide, assault, arson, uh, burglaries in there. Um, you can see it's pretty steady as it's going along there, you know, between uh, 75 and 100 per month uh, for this year. Uh, pretty, a little bit higher this year than you can see uh, last year for that spring uh, time. But then it starts going down a little bit lower. So hopefully we'll still see it decline um, as the year goes on. Part two crimes, more of your property crimes, larcenies, fraud, um, other types of kind of lower level crimes uh, that are property related. Uh, so you can see it kind of goes up and down there for this year, um, up into the 100 uh, mark there for uh, spring and then um, early uh, summer. 
and um, so it's pretty pretty consistent there. Auto theft, you can see it kind of goes jumps up and down. Um, obviously, it went up there in the spring, but it came down. That's kind of an interesting one because we work auto theft pretty aggressively, and uh, but it just depends on you know the time of the year. A lot of times when school's out, it's, things kind of pick up too. So. VUX activity, VUX is violation of Uniform Controlled Substance Act, so it's drug crimes. Um, a lot of that is what we generate in activity, too, uh, using our plainclothes resources, going out and shutting down drug houses. Um, you know, we picked up pretty well in the summer months there, hitting some, uh, making some, quite a few arrests uh, when they're drug related. And um, so that's, that's what we're looking at there, but it's still pretty, pretty flat there. Okay, gang related, uh, you know, the numbers look small there and pretty flat, but then that's very specific to a certain group of uh, type of activity. And then robberies uh, had a little bit of spike there in, in March, but then it is pretty flat and low, which is, that's pretty good news. And it's that robbery is included with the part one type crimes. Commercial burglary, we had an increase in August, so uh, detectives are working hard at that to, uh, you know, try to bring up stop to that. We'll see what it looks like as the rest of the year progresses, but for the most part, leading up to August is, is pretty flat. And then residential burglary, as you can see there, um, had a little, di little dip there in August, but for the most part, remains anywhere between uh, around 5 and 15 or so uh, throughout the, the year. So uh, that's per month and stuff. So anyway, that's what we have so far uh, for White Center area. And um, I'll be open for questions later on. So we're about to get into kind of the, uh, the executive branch department's portion of this. And the Department of Local Services was created in January of this year to try to solve a problem that's existed here for a while, which is the unincorporated area doesn't really have a local government in the same way that the cities in King County have a local government. The idea behind the department, the idea behind this meeting is to begin to provide information that's exclusive to the unincorporated area and to the extent that we can, actually the communities within the unincorporated area. So we're trying to show you data here that we gathered from different departments. This right here is our second quarterly report, um, which is broken down by unincorporated King County and then by community service area. It's the first time in my knowledge that the county's ever had anything like that. I'm going to give this commemorative copy to Councilmember McDermott, as I did to Councilmember Lambert last night. Oh, thank you. It's really exciting reading. You'll you now have a sleep aid, um, and that's a joke, but it also is sort of a warning that we're going to be using some of this data as people are talking to you. I would focus more on what people are talking about than the data you're seeing on the screen. But we just want people to know that as time goes by, we will have more and more of this, and we'll actually be able to, by the end of two years, be able to give you kind of what a city would have in terms of an annual report. So, um, and then, so we're, we're sort of two things. We're a data gathering enterprise, and then we're a community outreach enterprise. Um, and what we're trying to do and have built over the last several months is a presence out in unincorporated King County and a lot of the libraries. So we, for many years, have had a community service area person who is present in this community once a week, working with folks who are here. Um, we now have that presence in five different locations across the county weekly, and we're going to begin pairing that presence with um, staff from the Department of Permitting to provide people with some technical support if they're trying to apply for a building permit or something. And in some cases, we're going to be bringing pop-up services from some of these departments that are around the room. So if we see a need in the community, if we know there's something that people need, we can actually bring people out to you and have it available to you. You don't have to go to downtown Seattle to get it or go out to Snoqualmie to get a building permit. Um, and so this is just some very quick data and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it. Basically what it says is we've been out in the community a lot since January 1st. Um, we've been all over the place. Uh, and so this is just kind of a heat map we generated for the county council to just give them an idea of where we've been, which is everywhere. I think fully I'm about 40% of the meetings that we've had since the beginning of the year because it's just, from my point of view, important to be out talking to people if you're trying to understand what the needs are. Um, so just a couple of things to be aware of. Uh, this is the town hall schedule that we have. We're going to be out hitting every CSA in the county. We started in June. We took a little break, and now we're wrapping up. Um, 
And in a minute, when Jim Chan comes up here, we're also going to be talking about the sub area planning process that's going on here on White Center. And that's really important to folks in this community because it is the basically the land use overlay for this community that will that will speak to how you want the community to develop, what it will look like over the next 20 or 40 years as new buildings go up, as houses get built, what kind of zoning do you want, what do you want that zoning to require of developers so that they're doing the right thing for the community when they come into the community to develop. Um, but we'll talk more about that in a couple of minutes. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to my esteemed colleague, Robert Burns, from the Department of Natural Resources and Parks. All right, thank you, John. Uh, Bob Burns with the County's Department of Natural Resources and Parks. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, we greatly appreciate input and questions we get from the public. We'll be here, myself, uh, colleagues from DNRP will be here all night, so uh, please let us know if you have input into any of our programs and any questions. Uh, so I'm going to give a brief overview of the Department of Natural Resources and Parks, and then some of my department colleagues will follow with a little more detail on some programs. So Department of Natural Resources and Parks is four divisions and a director's office that provides an array of services. Our Parks Division operates the King County Park System, over 200 parks, 200 miles of paved regional trail, uh, an aquatic center, uh, 28,000 acres of open space, about 200 miles of, of backcountry hiking trails, uh, and the, the public last month voted to approve the renewal of the King County Parks levy, uh, allowing us to continue maintaining uh, and growing our, our park system. Uh, our Water and Land Resources Division provides an array of environmental programs. Uh, Josh Baldy's going to talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. But uh, drainage services, uh, flood warning center, noxious weed control, forestry and agriculture programs, uh, to name a few. Our Solid Waste Division provides uh, solid waste disposal services for the unincorporated area and 37 of the 39 cities. We do that by operating the Cedar Hills Landfill down east of, of Renton, uh, south and east of Renton, and a, a series of eight transfer stations and two drop boxes. Uh, the Zero Waste Grant Program uh, in our Solid Waste Division has just opened. Some of you, I think, in, a, in, the, in the community know about that. That's a grant program available to community uh, members and groups to uh, encourage recycling and waste reduction. Uh, if you're interested in that program, please come visit our solid waste table. Um, that program's open now and, and we're, we're taking applications. Uh, our department also provides, uh, protects public health and water quality through our wastewater treatment division uh, by treating the region's uh, sewage. We, we collect the sewage from 17 uh, local cities and, and sewer districts and, and treat it at three treatment, large treatment plants and two smaller local treatment plants. Uh, our director's office also provides leadership on climate and energy issues uh, in the county as well as historic preservation uh, work. One program I'd like to highlight tonight uh, is our land conservation initiative and I see Seeley in the crowd and, and uh, I want to just talk a minute about a, a, an important component of the Land Conservation Initiative. And, and the goal of this program is to ensure every resident in King County has access to green space. Uh, and, and there's been a lot of work over the last four or five years um, to, 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 to move this program forward, including work with an open space equity cabinet to look at um, how are we doing. There's a lot of prosperity in our region, but it's not shared uh, equally by all. We have portions of our county that don't have... Uh, green space. They've been underserved historically relative to green space and we've done analysis and have looked at the, the way our grant programs work um, and, and have made changes with the help of an open space equity cabinet that, that Celia was a part of um, and our executive and council have supported those programs and, and in fact we now have new rules that guide our, our, our land conservation grant work. Um, specifically in White Center, under those those new uh, that new construct, we've applied for grant funding and, and are recommended to receive grant funding to add green space in White Center. We very much want to work with the community. Um, we don't want to just buy the first piece of property that's available. We want to work with the community and understand how the community wants to use and interface with green space. And so throughout the fall, we very much look forward to working um, with community members on that. And again, if you're interested, please come see us at uh, the Parks Table. Thank you very much. Who's next? Josh. Josh Baldy. Good 
Good evening, Josh Baldy with the Water and Land Resources Division. There will be some slides here that talk about our surface water management program. That is our truly local service, so we perform drainage stormwater management throughout King County, uh, unincorporated area. Um, stormwater, I think you know tonight, it's going to rain. It rains a lot, over, a lot around here. And when it rains, uh, that when it hits pavement, streets, uh, parking lots, runs off the nearest water body, that can cause localized flooding for drainage issues. It also uh, impacts water quality and salmon habitat. So our programs are designed to slow the way uh, that rain enters our waterways and clean it to the degree we can. Uh, it's, it's our leading pollution source to Puget Sound, so it's a big job that we do. Um, but again, there's a lot of localized impacts. Uh, and so the programs that we have uh, work on inspecting all of our facilities, so things like um, stormwater ponds and tanks and vaults. We try to use uh, what we call green stormwater infrastructure, so as much as we can use nature to treat stormwater, we, we also encourage that. We have um, business um, <coughs> inspections, so we help people reduce the amount of uh, pollution that they generate and manage it if they do generate that. Um, we also work with the public in terms of our education and outreach around um, you know, helping people in our everyday lives, whether it be picking up poop or managing your cars, fixing leaks. Um, we have larger capital programs. And, um, and generally, you know, this, what we're trying to do here in White Center, actually, in addition, we know there have been issues here. Hicklin Lake has, has been a, lots of water quality problems with that. We've been working, we monitor that and are trying to identify uh, pollution sources to reduce the inputs to Hicklin Lake. And we've been working um, on uh, securing some grants to try to uh, design a strategy working in concert with the Land Conservation Initiative, so more green space that we can also use to treat stormwater, so what we call green stormwater infrastructure. So those are some of the strategies that we have here locally around our surface water management program. As Bob mentioned, we do regional salmon recovery. Um, we uh, are the real estate arm for the Land Conservation Initiative, so we um, purchase, um, we, we protect agricultural lands, forest lands, natural habitat. Um, and uh, for our parklands, we uh, and and uh, we so we our real estate arm acquires those and then we manage those as a county um, flood hazard reduction programs as well. And then the local service that we're featuring here tonight, Dan Sorison over here, we have a noxious weeds program. And so uh, our, it's a, a new app called King County Connect that will help you identify noxious weeds on your phone and or report them to experts such as Dan. And we also have a late addition, breaking addition, is Kathleen's over here with a map showing forest cover um, here in the urbanized area. So we're working on a 30-year forest plan. And much like the, the equity work we're trying to do to create more green space in underserved areas, obviously trees and forest cover are a huge part of that. So part of our 30-year part of forest plan is looking at forests not just out there in the Snoqualmie Valley and, and up in the upper lands, but also here in the areas that, in which we live. And uh, that's pretty much a summary of our work here. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Katie Terry. Hi, I'm Katie Terry. I'm the acting director for Parks. And um, as Bob mentioned earlier, we had a uh, levy that just passed in August. Uh, a really big deal for us because it's what keeps our doors open, but it also is how we provide our current and additional services um, to the region for the next six years. And the levy had six, had four goals, and just wanted to highlight a few projects that fit into those goals that we've been doing in White Center. Um, taking care of what you have is the first goal, and it's really taking care of the parks, the trails, uh, the whole system that we have here. And that means both daily maintenance, but also doing improvements. So for instance, in the last year, we've done improvements at Dick Thurnow Park, uh, both upgrading the play area and doing improvements at the picnic shelter, and those are the types of things that we're doing um, uh, throughout the county with the levy funding. A second is growing and connecting open space, and we're currently um, evaluating and doing some research on a couple of properties in the White Center area to see if there are opportunities to grow and connect open space. Um, a third uh, category or a third goal is improving regional mobility through regional trails. And we've been working on a project that over the next six years, we hope to be connecting up the Green River Trail uh, ends at Tukwila, uh, ends at a, at a park, and being able to extend that trail up along uh, and connecting into the Duwamish River Trail um, 
is a project that we have during the levy. Uh, we are currently doing design of that trail, and that's going to be a really neat, safer connection that people can currently go, but they're going along with a lot of traffic and trying to make safer connections to be able to connect into the whole regional trail system. And then the fourth category is making parks more accessible. And one of the things that we have at our table that we're really excited about is uh, we did a pilot project, or we did something new for us. Um, at Steve Cox, we've had a couple of ball fields that were underutilized. They were, uh, we had a lot of problems with drainage. There was a wetland behind it. And we heard a lot from the community that these fields were really important for playing and to be able to not just play on, but be able to come in, not just have organized sports, but drop-in sports. And um, we just opened up those ball fields this year, putting in artificial turf, which means that you can play on it year-round, adding lights so you can play into the evening after school, on the weekends, and setting up specific hours when the community could just drop in. Um, it's, if you're in the parks uh, rec in recreation business, you know that uh, fields are taken over by soccer groups all the time. And people who just live in the community want to be able to come and play. And so uh, we're really proud of that. If you haven't been by, they're beautiful fields, and they just opened this spring. Um, those all fit into the overall goals, uh, but also uh, tonight, I don't know that tonight we're highlighting, we highlight as much as we can the teen program. Darlene Sellers uh, has worked tirelessly. <laughs> in the community and uh, you know the sheriff's office had information about uh, crime statistics and what we hope to do through this program is it's that upstream investment in our youth and this is an after-school program we've increased the hours to it a great deal we've increased our staff so we could offer more programs uh, we're constantly looking at new ways to provide new services to provide more services and more hours and um, we're really proud of that program if you have any questions about that, about our parks, we have a map of all the parks in the neighborhood, but anything about the teen program, uh, we're here to answer your questions. Thanks. Thank you. Jim, you're up. I was just checking out the noxious weed. I'm sure. <laughs> interesting. Jim Chan, uh, Division Director for Permitting. We used to be up in, uh, we're still up in Snoqualmie. Um, a little bit about permitting. We, as many of you know, used to be DDS. We used to be bald back in the 1990s. We're recently uh, DPER, but now we're permitting as under the local services division. Doing the same work, just a different name. So other than permitting, well, let's start with permitting. Those, these are our statistics for the first two quarters of uh, 2019. As you can see, we issued and took in about, what, 12, 1,300 permits so far for the year, 1,400. Um, we anticipate probably about four or 5,000 permits by the end of the year, doing about uh, 6,500 to 7,000 inspections. Um, our current online permit applications are listed here. We're going more and more online with our permits. And recently, these are the ones that we've added. By the end of the year, we hope to have more building permits online that we currently have. When we went to the first quarter and checked our statistics of how many people applied online, it was 24% of all permits that are that we that we allow. Second quarter was 52%. So we're ramping up. As soon as we get single family permits online, we anticipate those numbers to go up to 60, 70%. So the exciting thing about that is wherever you are, Vashon Island or anywhere else in the county, you don't have to go to Snoqualmie. You can do a lot of the work with us for permitting online through mybuildingspermits.com. And we have videos, YouTube videos, online to show you how to work and navigate those permits. You can look at status of permits. You can look at your neighbor's permits. You can do, we have research tools that you can look at your own property and see what you can do. And you can check on code enforcement violations if there are code enforcement violations in your area. So that sort of segues into some of the other services we provide at permitting. Code, code enforcement is one of our services. So if you have a complaint that you would like to, you observe something that is not quite right, please contact us either on the web page, by phone, uh, and we will investigate those complaints and we will follow through. So code enforcement, our stats show that we, I think we have done, we do about a thousand cases a year. Um, we have six officers that cover all of our incorporated King County and we do it on a complaint driven basis. 
so we work closely with the sheriff's office on those things that escalate to criminal vice versa they see civil things that happen land use violations they coordinate with us so we have a partnership with the sheriff's office the other thing we do is we have a fire marshals uh, uh, service so we do your burn bans during the summer when it's hot and there's hazards we issue fireworks permits and soon we'll be working with councilmember mcdermott and the executive on a potential uh, fireworks uh, ban um, we do the uh, our fire uh, office also does all of the fireworks stands and uh, we will have a website that will show you when we have burn bans on and burn bans off um, one other thing I want to mention that we do is uh, sub area planning as jo as uh, John mentioned earlier the sub area plan land use sub area plan schedule uh, is listed here we are currently about to close the book on Skyway. We're about to deliver that ordinance. We have started North High Line, this area, and we plan to deliver that by June of 2020. So right now, uh, there are two primary planners assigned to work in this community to develop that plan, work with you regularly between now and when we deliver that product in June. David Goodman is one of those principal or one of those planners, and the other is Kevin LeClaire. I think he's also in the room. So there he is, Kevin LeClaire. <clears throat> You'll be seeing a lot of them. If, have, if you guys have any questions about what we plan to do in terms of land use and the land use of area plan, please contact them. Um, you can see the rest of the schedule for the remaining uh, sub-area plans for the next 10, 20, 20 years. This is a rotation. We're going to be continuing to do this as well as, as soon as, as, well, as we get funded to do these, we'll continue to do that. So I, I want to introduce David Goodman, who will give us a little detail about where we are with the North High Line sub-area plan. Come on up, David. Thanks, everyone. I'll make it uh, real quick. My name is David, and I'm a sub-area planner with the county. And uh, as Jim mentioned, we're right at the very beginning of our planning process for North High Line, which includes uh, White Center, Glendale, not Glendall, but uh, you'll have to forgive the typo there, and then up uh, the river a little bit in the South Park Sliver by the river. So in, in summary, what we're looking at is all the land use and zoning uh, that uh, is in place in this neighborhood. And, what that does is that really dictates what type of development can occur in this in this neighborhood. So what kind of buildings you can build, what that property can be used for, uh, how many housing units can go on each property. So although you won't see the uh, effects of it for maybe 10, 15 years, those decisions are really made right now in this process. So uh, if you care about this community, and which I'm sure you all do since you're here, um, I'd really love to hear your vision for what you want this community to look like in 10 or 15 years, uh, because now's the time to set that vision. So. Um, we're out in the community a lot. Just this week, we've met with Rainier Prep, we met with Mount View Elementary, we were at Food Lifeline in the industrial area, we've worked a lot with the White Center CDA, we're working with NUAC, um, we're working with King County Housing Authority, uh, we're doing a business focus group later this month, um, we've got open office hours at Steve Cox Park, um, so we're really trying to get out there and really understand what people here care about and what they want to see their community look like so that we can turn all that information into a really good plan that's really reflective of what people uh, want their community to look like. So um, I hope you'll come by. We're, I'm right here with the permitting desk. We've got a zoning map so we can talk a little more about what the zoning is in this area. We've got a little board here uh, where you can agree or disagree with a bunch of different statements that have to do with some of the issues that we're working on. Um, and I've got all sorts of other information, email list, a survey, um, so anything you want to know about this topic. I know sometimes it can seem a little technical, um, but we're, we're really trying hard to make it super accessible so that you can feel like you understand the issues and can give us an opinion that's going to help us make a plan uh, that you all can be proud of. So um, thanks for being so welcoming so far, and I'm looking forward to continuing to work with you. Um, this planning process is going to run through uh, next spring, through, so through next June. Um, right now we're just kind of in the getting to know you phase, but pretty soon uh, after that we're going to start developing some specific proposals that we're going to then bring back to you, talk about, see if you like it, if you don't like it, we'll change it, if you like it, we'll keep it. This is really about, not, not really about what we think is a good idea, but it's about what you all want to see. So I look forward to continuing to work with you, uh, and I hope to talk to many of you over here. Chairman the Road Services Division. 
Thank you, John. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jeremy, and I oversee road maintenance for King County. Uh, the road services division consists of about 400 employees, and we're broken up into three groups. One does all the admin, accounting, uh, payroll, all the sorts of stuff that keeps the business afloat. And then we have an engineering services section, and tonight our engineering services section manager is here. So if you have questions uh, related to how it's designed or what goes behind the scenes of, of getting ready to construct something, uh, Rose will either be able to answer your question or jot down your information to answer your question at a later time. Uh, my group oversees the maintenance of about 1,500 miles of road and 182 bridges and all the things that go with that, so the drainage and the sidewalks and that sort of thing. There's about, so there's about 200 line staff that maintain all of that area. And a lot of times, we can't always see all the little details, the pothole here or the dead animal there. So it would be great if you all stop by our table here in the back, right next to Rose, and pick up one of these cards. This card has information on how to reach road services uh, desk if you have a question about engineering or about maintenance or if you want to report uh, an animal, a pothole, a, a broken sign, whatever, you just call us and, and it's answered 24 hours a day, seven days a week by a live human being based in Renton, Washington, right? Just miles from here. So um, we also have an opportunity tonight if you want to report your issue tonight. Uh, Mandana is here and she can take down your information and uh, and send it in and and we can get back to you with, with information on how to uh, how to track that number. In the White Center area, we've been really busy this year. We've done a couple of, of bigger projects. One project that I'd like to highlight is we're investing nearly $400,000 into sidewalks in White Center. We've also done a significant amount of work around striping all of the, the lane markings and doing some thermoplastic uh, crosswalks and turn lanes and that sort of thing. We've also replaced a number of signs that were getting faded and hard to see at night. So we're really doing our, our best to get out there and, and try to make sure that we're doing a good job in the community to make things uh, safe for the traveling public and pedestrians as well. One other in individual I want to point out tonight, Tony Ledbetter is in the back of the room, and he oversees all the folks that do the, the maintenance work in the different individual uh, geographic areas. So if you have a question tonight about a maintenance activity in your neighborhood, uh, stop by and either see me or see Tony, and we'd be happy to answer as many questions as we can. And I didn't pay attention to the stats in the back of me, but they're right here. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I think next we have Terry White from Metro to say a few words. Uh, we do not have a service partnership agreement with Metro, so we just are having... Um, Metro and Department of Community and Human Services come up and just give you a quick overview of what's going on in the neighborhood. Thanks, John. So, so I'll let you know a secret. Uh, I was not planning to talk to you all today. I came out to <laughs> listen to you all today. Uh, this, so we, we scheduled uh, our staff to come out and visit and actually plan to talk to you all. Um, and I tend to sneak around and follow John sometimes and go to areas where I grew up in. So I came out here because White Center is an area I grew up in. I grew up in uh, Rainier Vista. My mother didn't have a vehicle, ever. Polio grew up, couldn't drive, was never going to drive. So the only way we got around was buses. So I love buses uh, so much that I grew up and became a part of King County Metro bus uh, intentionally. Uh, always loved it. At 10, I knew I was coming somehow, somehow. So, so I, I think I, it's always interesting to me to hear from our general public, our customers, about what they want versus coming out as the planners and the perfect uh, trained individuals who, have, who are the residential experts on what you need. And then to tell you, and this is how we're going to do it for you, and life's going to be great. So we've been trying to change our mindset. mindset which is more about listening than about telling. Uh, so for us, uh, our philosophy is that everybody deserves the opportunity to move. Everybody should have mobility of some sort. If we do this right, then it'll be a coordinated mobile effort, which means everybody does get to move. If you ever been to LA, 
and you've hung out on the 405, the only time you get to move on the 405 is between 2 a.m. and 3.15 a.m. <laughs> Everything else is, it's not moving. And we don't want a community that is going to see another million folks come here between now and 2040, another 850,000 jobs, and we haven't taken the time to listen to you all and to figure out how to do a concerted dance that allows folks to move, to thrive. So what we want to do is shift our mindset, come out, hear from you, and try to deliver products that you need. Uh, Councilman, Councilmember McDermott mentioned first and last mile. We're doing a lot of piloting and testing to see what really works. Uh, but the goal is first and last mile kind of helps us in the sense that it, it moves you from a place to a place, and then you get into the spine of our system which means we're not running parallel competing services, which is what causes the congestion. So if we can figure that piece out, make it easy for you to leave your vehicles at home, then we're doing our job, and then hopefully in that, with all the other things that we want to do, like battery electric buses, we provide a little more than just an A to B experience, which is I want to go from here to here. Because for a lot of us, here is not a street. It's, it's a change in where you came from, like for me. So for us, uh, literally, I was coming out to sit there in that chair and just listen. Uh, but Sorry. It kind of works that way sometimes. Um, I, I am very interested in what you have to say. I want to steal from your minds and take it back to our team. Uh, and that's what we want to do throughout the King County region. We want to make this place good for all of us. So I'm not going to take up any more of your time. I want to get in my chair, and I want to hear what you have to say to me. Thank you. <laughs> All right, and then uh, last but not least, Mark Ellerbrook, from, who's the Director of Housing, but speaking on behalf of Department of Community and Human Services. Great. Thank you very much. And uh, as John said, my name is Mark Ellerbrook, and I'm the Division Director for Housing, Homelessness, and Community Development for the Department of Community and Human Services. So the Department of Community and Human Services provides, um, as the name implies all of that throughout King County, but uh, also here uh, directly in White Center. We've been out a number of times uh, talking with all of you about various projects and just wanted to update you a little bit on what um, we have going on, uh, certainly within the housing and uh, homelessness and affordable housing community development sphere. Um, one thing that the council member mentioned starting, we have been doing a lot of work around the homeless system redesign, uh, and that will be coming out. We've certainly heard lots of comments from folks in this community accurately talking about it. The, uh, the issue of homelessness, how is it being addressed, how is it being coordinated. Um, White Center, um, as it is on the border with um, Seattle, is, an, is actually kind of a perfect example of how the coordination between what the county provides and what the city uh, provides could be better aligned. And so the redesign process is really um, designed specifically to help address that issue so that there isn't um, kind of pointing and saying, oh, that's the other person or the other entities. Um, issue to address. So that's one major thing that we are working on. Um, folks know that we um, continue to support the Mary's Place um, shelter, which is at the former public health clinic. I think that's been, we've gotten only positive feedback from folks since that's been running. So that's been a great um, asset. As we understand it here in the community, we know that the community has done a great job in supporting that. We certainly hear that regularly from Mary's Place. Uh, and so I just want to say thank you for uh, the support that you've been providing uh, to them as neighbors. Another project that folks are familiar with is the White Center Hub project that we are working on. That is sort of the future vision for what is going to go in at that public health um, location. That process has been a long road to the point we are at and frankly has a fair ways to go. The White Center Hub project actually is an opportunity to combine community services, event space, office space and housing all in one location. It's been a work, a lot of work with um, the White Center CDA and CELES here have been doing a lot of work with that. Southwest Youth and Family Services has been involved and they've actually struck a partnership with Capitol Hill Housing who brings a lot of um, experience in sort of building community oriented spaces. So that's a partnership that is ongoing. Uh, they are probably a year away from applying for funding uh, from the county and other funders a year after that for their permit and probably um, a total of three years until the construction starts on that. So there's lots of opportunity to continue to be involved in the design and the thinking about what that project is going to look like. Uh, and so when we're involved and, and the CDA is involved, so you can stop by um, our area if you have questions on that. 
And then the last piece that I'll comment on, this has been a partnership, I think, with the county council and with the uh, permitting group as well, is the, uh, the demonstration project that we have been working on. Uh, and this is the uh, micro housing project. What the county council uh, requested that the Department of Community and Human Services with permitting look at some demonstration projects for micro housing, tiny homes, lots of conversation kind of region wide about uh, how those will work. Uh, so we are exploring with permitting a demonstration project in White Center uh, looking at microhousing. It is, um, the process is that a demonstration ordinance will go to council for consideration. We are in the public comment period right now, taking people's feedback on what uh, a microhousing project in this community could and should look like. Uh, and so we have lots of information right over here um, at the at the booth to talk about sort of that project. So that is um, in process. The ordinance is due to council in December. So we've got several more months for people to provide feedback. We can then tailor that up, get it over to council um, and for their process. And then we will uh, be working with the community and with the um, uh, potential applicant under that project in the kind of middle of the year. So it's a few highlights that we have going on and I will stop there and uh, happy to answer questions. Thanks. Thanks, so not much going on. Um.